to your next challenge entitled reversing a binary string. Write a function that takes an integer n, reverses the binary representation of that integer, and returns the new integer from the reversed binary. Let's look at the examples to understand. We see that the first argument given is 10, and when you convert 10 into its binary equivalent, you get this 1010. And then finally, reversing those digits would have C reading from the bag 0101. And then when you convert that back into an integer, this value is 5, right? Um, in case you don't recall what the binary numbers, the first position is the 2 to the 0 power, the 1's place. This would be 2 to the 1, so that has a weight of 2. Uh, this would be 2 to the 2, or 2 squared, which is 4, so you can see that it has a 4 and a 1, and 4 plus 1 is 5, um, in case you needed that refresher, or you haven't looked at binary numbers much. Feel free to go through the rest of the examples, see that 12, 1, 1, 0, 0 goes to 0, 0, 1, 1, and that's 2 plus 1 is 3, and you can look at the rest of these as well. They tell us that all values of n will be positive, but it would be easy enough for us to um, add some error checking for that. I'll probably just assume it, but remember, good functions always are on guard. We'll go over to code. You know the drill. Pause the video, give this an honest attempt, and then resume when you're ready. We're going to use a class that we've used at least once in the past. It's called convert, and I think it's in the system name space. Yeah. And so convert has all of these ways to convert between um, some of these data types. The one we want to start with is called two byte, right? We want it to take a, um, an integer and convert it to its binary form. Let me see if they have an example down here. And that's fine, we'll print out a statement to show it in action. So let's let's go and do that. Or I'm I'm sorry, I'm mixing up. We used to byte last time, right? Uh, first things first, sorry for the mix up. We're gonna be reversing, right? So the general strategy will be to convert this into binary first. And then I'll make it into a string, and you'll see I'll actually be able to do that in one step. And then from string, we know that's an array of characters. Because it's an array, we know the array class has a reverse method that we've used in the past. So that's going to do the work of reversing those um, bits. And then finally, we can use the convert class to go back to an integer. And so that's the general plan of attack here. So we actually wanted uh, convert to string because we're going to leverage character character array for the reversal. So let's go to to string, and then I think this is the overload we want. Converts a value of an integer to its equivalent string representation in a specified base. That's perfect. So this was the one we wanted. You give it a value and you give it its base. Um, the base of the return value, we're going to go for 2, right? If you wanted octal, you could use 8. If you wanted hexadecimal, you could use 16. But we want binary. Those were our instructions. So let's do that. So we can go string binary and we'll use our convert class to string and we know we can pass those two parameters that we read about. The first will be our initial value that we're passed in and then we can say two to make that into binary and if you want for fun we can print this out just so you can see it doing that. Turn some garbage here if you just want to see it. Oh, I need to include that class, remember. What's this 
system namespace we saw from the doc. Okay, obviously it failed, we gave it bad output, but you can see these binary statements printing out, right? So good. You can go to the tests tab and see the the input to be sure that that binary is coming out like you expect. It looks like it goes one four five. Binary equals one. Yep, that's one. One zero zero is four, right? That's four. And one oh one would be a four and a one, which is five. So yeah, that all looks good. We're getting the binary that we wanted. So the next step is, since we have a string, we can make it into a character array, right? We know that strings underneath it all are a collection of characters. And let's call it bits. It will be all the binary values separated out. And for that, we can say binary to char array. This is nothing new, right? We've used this property of strings, this method I should say that you get with strings to do this. So now it has this 100. Zero, zero. Imagine it broken up into one element that has a 1, the second element is a 0, and the third element is a 0. But they're chars, they're not integers at this point. So because we have an array, we can do that thing we've done before. We know that the array class has a reverse method. We can pass it the bits. And that should take this 100 zero zero and turn it into a 001. Zero zero um, 101 would be the same, but you get the idea. So that's handy. That'll take care of the reversal for us. And then finally, we can use our convert class to go back to an int. Oh, sorry, I already have the return. Convert, and we'll go back to the doc to see this but it has a way to go to an integer. So we did two string, let's do two in 32. We'll see if that doesn't cover us, we can always go larger. Two thirty-two. So this looks like the overload we want. Uh, converts the string representation of a number in a specified base to an equivalent 32-bit signed integer. This is perfect, right? We give it our binary value, and then in our second parameter, we say 2. We're telling it, hey, this string is, we want you to convert this from a binary number. Otherwise, it's not going to work out if it doesn't know that the value we're giving it is binary. So we'll specify that in 32. Now, remember, array reversed work worked on this character array. So I can make that back into a string. If you want to create a separate variable for it, you can. I'm just going to do it in place here. I'm going to say new string bits. And we've done this again in the past. We know that you that the string class has a constructor that takes a char array, and it can make a string out of that. So that's all we're doing here. You could have you know, written out a string variable on the next line and then inserted that variable name in here if you like. I'm just going to do it in place. So we got new string bits, right? And that's our string, our binary string. And then for that second argument, we're going to say 2. That's going to say, hey, interpret this thing as a binary number right now. And then when it does its conversion to int, it'll do it appropriately. So I think we're good there. We'll give this a run. See how it goes. Cool, yeah. All the tests passed. I suppose I can remove my print statement now. But you can see. Looking good. So yeah, hopefully you remembered a lot of these techniques from the previous videos, and that's sort of the point of going through the easier challenges, right? Sometimes they may seem beneath you, but uh, you really want to ingrain these, these um, tools into your head. And it's sort of right there in your arsenal and you begin to think of solutions in terms of the things that you already know.
and it can be quite helpful at times. So yeah, first converted to a binary string, we were able to leverage the fact that a string is a collection of characters to make it into an array because we had an array class that does reverse for us. And then finally take it back to an integer with this nice convert class. This convert class came to the rescue at the beginning and the end. So that's basically it in a nutshell. If you have questions, please post them below. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.